come to the college uh, in this uh, rain. <coughs> so uh, then coming back to our uh, syllabus today, we would I would like to discuss with you the uh, wildlife conservation, a new topic. Uh, if you recollect what we have discussed in the last uh, two three classes on the wildlife problems. We have uh, categorically listed some of the very important problems that has been faced by the wildlife. Because of all these problems, the wildlife are facing a very precarious future. Many of them have become endangered and uh, especially uh, the endemic species are highly threatened. So uh, considering all these things, uh, we can uh, now should think about how best uh, it can be conserved because conservation uh, is more necessary for, uh, in the day so that we will be able to uh, protect our wildlife for the future. Uh, in the very beginning, uh, I would like to make it clear that the term wildlife conservation is a misleading term nowadays. Because what do you mean by conservation? Conservation means strict protection without utilization. Strict protection without utilization. But uh, you know, uh, at present we are unable to, uh, either it may be for wildlife or for any uh, natural resources, strict protection is of course it's okay, but without utilization is the almost impossible to practice. So that's why nowadays uh, the better term they use is wildlife management instead of conservation. Conservation is a very old term. Now uh, we think about, uh, we always look into the wildlife management. How best the wildlife or any natural resources can be managed for the betterment of the society and at the same time how we will be able to uh, keep it for our future generation also. So this is the need of the hour and how we should address this problem of this uh, of the wildlife. Uh, to be more precise, uh, the conservation is the strict protection without utilization. But the management is totally a different concept nowadays. It is, uh, for example, management is just like if you have some capital, say if you have one crore rupees, uh, what you will do, it is better to keep it in the bank and use its interest only, so that the capital re remains for your future, uh, for your ge next generation and uh, to your children, grandchildren and other things. So the wildlife or any natural resources are to be managed like that, instead of uh, uh, putting the clear, um, I mean strict conservation, we should think about the better management. So that, and it is, uh, uh, the most appropriate term will be the sustainable management. Sustainable management of the wildlife. So in this wildlife conservation, though as per your syllabus uh, title, it goes like that, that the wildlife conservation, but what we discuss is the wildlife management. Now, in this uh, wildlife management, all of you know what is wildlife. Anything which is not domesticated, we call it as, uh, non-domesticated animals, we call it as wildlife. So this wildlife uh, uh, conservation uh, or management is the practice of protecting the animal species. It's the practice. There are so many problems. modern practices are there, there are many traditional management systems. All those things are were there in order to protect the wildlife. So here uh, conservation means or the management means it is the practice of protecting the animal in its habitat only, not uh, transporting to some zoo or to laboratory and conserve it or manage it. But instead of that, what is the need of the hour is protect the animal species in their natural habitat. That is what we are going to discuss here. Uh, you know, as a part of this world's ecosystem, wildlife provides a balance and stability to the natural process. Without wildlife, what would have happened, it is beyond our imagination. Because the wildlife 
it, it, it provides a balance and stability to the nature's process. Without this stability and balance, probably our nature will be imbalanced and it will certainly harm the human beings. So, uh, here our motto in the management or conser conservation is the is to ensure the survival of the species. First, to survival of the species and to educate the people on living sustainably with other species. Uh, all of us know that when discussing the wildlife problem, we have understood that uh, for most of the problem that is faced by the wildlife, the we human beings are responsible. So that's why in order to conserve or manage the wildlife means it is educating the people on how to live sustainably with the other species. Otherwise, we human beings being the uh, apex of the evolution, we think that we are the uh, caretaker of everything and in the name of a caretaker, we have destroyed the nature's balance. So that's why uh, this our goal at present as far as the wildlife conservation is to ensure the survival of those these wildlife species for this what we have to do is we have to educate the people um, on how to live with those wildlife and we can share the benefit at the same time we will also ensure that these wildlife can perpetuate for the future generation that is more important see um, for example the human population has grown exponentially, what we call the population expansion over the past 200 years. Uh, past the, to more than 7 billion people today we have all over the world. And uh, naturally uh, it continues to grow rapidly. Population always increases in a geometrical ratio, remember. Uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 like that in a geometrical progression it grows. So that's why that's the reason for this population explosion, explosion as well as the exponential growth of the exponential growth of this human population. Uh, when there's a growth in the human population, human population explodes. That means indirectly and directly we can say that there is a more pressure on all the natural resources because these natural resources are being consumed faster by these billions of people on this uh, planet. So this growth and development of the human beings, what we call growth as well as the development of the human being, uh, that envisages the endangers the habitat and the existence of other organisms. The growth and development of the human beings is always at the cost of other organisms and at the cost of natural resource, other natural resources. In so, uh, particularly animals, plants, they are displaced for the development and used for food and for other human purposes. So, other threats um, are also there along with that. That is also again anthropogenic, either the invasion of the new species or climate change, pollution, hunting, fishing, poaching, all those things which we have discussed. Uh, just to recollect what we have discussed in the uh, last chapter, the threats to wildlife. One is the loss of habitat. Uh, why more and more area uh, we require for agriculture and uh, urbanization, for development work, road construction, electric uh, line construction, so far so many activities the uh, this uh, wildlife are losing their habitat. Then followed by that there is an indiscriminate hunting, uh, poaching for the purpose of food, horn, fur, uh, tusk, etc. Uh, we have uh, what we have done is uh, we have caused the extinction of large number of species. Then it is coupled with the introduction of some exotic species, many native species. Uh, are no, they have become disappeared and or even if there are many of them are uh, under a threat to become extinct. So this is mainly because of introduction of some exotic species or more hardy species. Then 
another problem again anthropogenic is the pollution either it may be land pollution air pollution water pollution soil pollution anything you can take again it is the uh, contribution from the human being we have released so many synthetic materials variations oils into the environment and thereby polluted it this pollution directly affects the wildlife then um, habitat loss is another important thing as i have told you especially the clearing of rain forests for wood timber or for coal for various reason uh, on an estimate say that we have lost 20% uh, what we have the forest today is are only 20% less forest cover than which was existed some uh, 300 years ago poaching hunting uh, trade national international wildlife trade all those things um, have threatened this um, wildlife which all of you know now what will happen if there is a loss of wildlife so one is a imbalance of food chain and ecosystem and uh, many of the rare and uh, endemic wild animals will disappear it will impact the biodiversity even economically also it causes loss and ultimately it may cause danger to the human life and if any species is lost means we lost the genetic information that is stored in that uh, animal because today you know it is the age of information information or data is more important but the loss of one species means loss of that genetic information so as a result many of the organisms have become uh, endangered like majestic elephants bison hispid hare swamp deer desert cat leaf monkey or snow leopards so now uh, because of all these things uh, there is need for wildlife conservation wildlife is to be managed or it should be conserved um, wildlife refers to mighty tiger to humble worker bee bumble bee the huge variety of life on this earth and all of them contributes to our life and well being in more than the way we think many times we consider many of them are very small for example you take the example of honey bees there is one estimation if the honey bees uh, they become extinct probably human race will also become extinct because honey bees play a very very important role in the pollination uh, so this wildlife they add wealth to us and it is the wealth of natural medicine uh, which uh, can safeguard us from uh, the various diseases ailments and all and even it can protect us from climate shocks it can it will increase the soil health for all this reason we need the wildlife however uh, what has happened is uh, but because of our lifestyle uh, we are ignoring this fact uh, the way we work the way we live uh, and the, from the food we eat to how we build our infrastructure everything is causing a steep decline in their numbers an estimation an estimate states say that in the past 40 years alone we have seen an average on average a decline of 60% in population of the species in last 40 years we have seen 60% drop in the species richness uh, just now you imagine probably uh, a per people or person will think seriously about this either conservation or management of the wildlife wildlife provided he or she understands the importance of this wildlife because when we think when we understand the importance 
then we give more care. Suppose if uh, uh, if we know the wealth of this wildlife, then there will be, I think, uh, we will ascribe more care to it. So that's why uh, for the uh, today uh, we will discuss about why this wildlife should be managed or protected or conserved. What is the necessary? What is the use of it? Because we conserve or protect anything if it is useful to human being. So that's why from the human perspective we will see uh, the importance of this wildlife. So one is the most important thing is the wildlife plays an important role in, protect, in protection against climate change. Of course, the climate change itself has affected the wildlife, but the disappearance of the wildlife will have more severe impact on the climate change. Uh, it has been observed that protecting the wildlife could significantly reduce the frequency and intensity of destructive forest fires. Many, many times the climate change is because of the forest fires, wildfires. So wildlife could significantly reduce the frequency and intensity of these forest fires. Uh, how? Because if you, if we protect or care naturally uh, in a cared forest, well managed forest, the incidence of wildfires is very very less. Uh, so here, uh, what will happen if? The, some of the species are not protected. For example, think that we exterminate all the predators like uh, tiger, leopards, uh, or any other organism. Then what will happen? Plant eating wild animals will grow much faster because there is no natural predation for them. Then the amount of grass that can uh, the animals the uh, reduce the amount of grass. Uh, then grasses will be more, grass eating organisms will be more. Even if we have enough number of herbivores, what about the amount of grass uh, that catches the fire will be less because these herbivores eat the grasses. Usually in a forest fire, the first the grass catch fire. So suppose if we have more herbivores, they uh, graze on this grass and so that uh, the incidence of forest fire will be less. Uh, for example, in one particular uh, park in Kuriwe Folozi Park in South America, South Africa, for example, uh, it has um, one of the world's largest uh, grazers, especially the white rhinos white uh, rhinoceros has been known to reduce the spread and intensity of the fire especially after the high rainfall when the grasses grow more rapidly those grasses are eaten by this uh, white rhinoceros uh, even another large wild grass eaters such as elephants zebra rhinos and camels uh, they do not emit large amount of methane also methane is one of the major uh, gas, greenhouse gas or the gas responsible for uh, climate change. But uh, elephant, gibras, rhinos and camels, they do not produce large amount of me uh, methane. But however, our livestock like cattle, they produce large amount of methane. Um, so uh, by having uh, uh, these wild animals, the, the amount of greenhouse gases that is released in the atmosphere will also be low as compared to the domestic livestock. Uh, the very simple reason is uh, our uh, domestic livestock that they are the ruminants. Uh, but whereas uh, these non-ruminants like zebras, rhinos, camels, elephants, they digest the grass in a different way than the livestock. Uh, because here they use large single stomach but whereas our ruminants cattle they are the uh, ruminants and they regurgitate their food and as a result the amount of methane gas released will also be high 
then more than that wildlife can also help in the carbon sequestration now the need of the hour is carbon sequestration that is the removal of the carbon from the atmosphere the this wildlife can also help forest to store carbon more efficiently uh, how you may ask for example there are many plant species in the tropical rain forests rely on the animal for their uh, dispersal like elephants or toucans they eat their large fleshy fruits and uh, take them away from that and disperse their seeds so as a result more uh, vegetation more vegetation means more carbon sink more carbon sequestration uh, the trees with large fruits can grow taller than those with small fruits uh, and taller trees more taller trees means more amount of ca carbon stored in their body so they um, store or trap carbon more effectively so for example the if we lose such big trees result in as much as 10% drop in carbon storage potential the big trees larger trees are more important as far as the carbon sink is concerned or carbon uh, storage is concerned so suppose if we lose this uh, big trees 10% there will be 10% drop in the carbon storage potential of these tropical forests there's a one reason why we should protect the wildlife second one is the nutrient rich food source wild animals which all of you know they serve as a critical food source because these animals are rich in proteins and minerals for billions of years around the world billions of people around the world depend upon this wildlife as a nutrient rich food source uh, for example the united nation food and agriculture organization uh, reports that uh, 34 million people rely on fishing for living there are 34 million people fishermen which are rely on fishing for their livelihood and uh, this 34 million people they provide protein to 3 billion people 34 million people they provide the necessary protein to over 3 billion people uh, in many tropical countries uh, people harvest over 6 million tons of medium to large sized mammals we harvest either by hunting poaching or various means 6 million tons of medium to large sized mammals birds reptiles for their meat annually uh, and all of you know there is a rich source of important minerals also so if we lose the wildlife we deprive them from their food uh, even wildlife ranching could also have a major advantage in human health suppose if you are able to rank the wildlife we rank the domestic animals but there are if you are able to rank this wildlife also uh, because this meat contains higher proportions of unsaturated fatty acids compared to the chicks or the cow or sheep which we uh, domesticate this wild animals have contain higher proportion of unsaturated fatty acid which is a good fat for us uh, even consuming the wild meat also helps to cut down the food miles and carbon footprints and this will because the food production requires a large amount of carbon footprints we can reduce the carbon footprints making it a win win situation for the human beings as well as the entire planet then the wildlife is the nature's medicine cabinet nature's medicine nature medicine cabinet probably the chemicals from the nature has become a part of the human civilization ever since our ancestors started using them to improve and enrich 
their own lives the chemicals today uh, they continue to provide the valuable knowledge to the researchers and medical practitioners with the crucial implication for medical science many of these animals for example the amphibians are especially important for in the modern medicine with compounds extracted from the frog alone the compounds extracted from the frog alone used for various diseases like treating depression seizures strokes memory loss for this we extract lot of medicine from the uh, frogs uh, we also rely on animals for the range of novel components including the frog glue what is this frog glue it's a flexible adhesive obtained from the glands of australian holy cross frog it's an adhesive gum obtained from the glands of australian holy cross frog species uh, that is used to treat the human knee, knee injury especially in the sports and other things if there's a knee injury then the frog glue is used for that even the lanolin lanolin and vitamin d3 are derived from sheep's wool sheep's wool contains uh, one chemical that is the lanolin and the vitamin d3 and even primarin primarin is prepared from the mare's urine that's the s urine and used to treat uh, menopausal symptoms in case of the uh, female when the menopause starts usually the primarin is used for that you have to uh, collect the mare's urine and uh, use it in pharmaceutical industry so that's why uh, it's not wrong if you call the wildlife as nature's medicine cabinet then wildlife have cultural significance also lot of cultural significance uh, here it is the non material benefits you cannot count in terms of money the benefits ranging from spiritual enrichment to leisure pursuits while they are very difficult to measure and value uh, most important there is the most important contribution of wildlife to the human well being cultural significance wildlife offer numerous therapeutic benefits research shows that people are most drawn to landscape that are tranquil aesthetically appealing and have a historic significance and contain wildlife probably if you look into our uh, uh, mythology puranas and other things all great sages were found they used to build their hermit in the dense forest have you ever seen any sage or saint having his ashram in the cities no it is always in the forest and lot many uh monumental works like ramayana maybe mahabharata or all those things have uh, been written by those sages and saints sitting in a very tranquil environment which is aesthetically appealing and it has some historic significance and it has it contains wildlife wherever you read the description of the ashramas of these saints and sages you will get a narration about the wildlife there also and nature's habitat and even today uh, you can see many people go to himalaya or mountains or dense forest for the very same reason uh, then the natural habitats and landscapes which support the wildlife population uh, also serve as a place for the people to interact with the wildlife because even we human beings want to interact with the wildlife uh, it may range from photographing the wildlife to watching or making wildlife films and all those it, these are all cultural significance uh, 
not surprisingly uh, international travel to wildlife destinations has tripled over the past 20 years where the people visit the protected areas um, even many of the developing countries are generating an estimate revenue of 6600 US billion dollars in a year most of the developing countries because the developing countries are rich in biodiversity that is in the wildlife so that's why they are generating an estimated revenue of 600 US dollars billion US dollars every year even they help in improving the soil health and fertility soil is an adaptive factor it is very very essential for the very survival of the human beings also uh, wild animals play a key role in enhancing the health and fertility of the soil by adding more and more nutrients to it the dung of the wild animals urine helps to replenish the nutrient content of the soil and they also enrich them with the minerals so in a well wooded evergreen forest if you take a fistful of soil one fistful of soil it will contain millions and millions of microorganisms so the uh, to give an example the hippopotamus it grazes in the night night time grazing in the grassland uh, brings nutrient back to the river through the dung increasing fish productivity so you know the why these uh, rivers mouths are very fertile where you can see the maximum primary productivity because the rivers when they drain through the mountains they bring lot of these uh, nutrients back to the back to the rivers either maybe through their dams and all those things and it will certainly help the availability increase in the fish productivity fish productivity will be high so that more number of fish means more it can sustain more livelihood of the local people this um, wildlife promotes pollination small animals particularly bees insects butterflies birds they play an important role in food production because they carry out the process of pollination so the many times we say when we say the wildlife we always think larger mammals larger mammals are equally important but these small bees insects butterflies and birds are equally important because they have an important role in food production uh, by bringing the process of pollination uh, so the management of these animals will certainly aid in pollination because many of them depend on nectar from the flowers uh, when they collect the nectar they also carry out the process of uh, pollination and dispersal of the seeds so this is vital in the crop production production intercropping and promoting the continuity of native plant species so they help in uh, pollination uh, by moving from one flower to another in search of the nectar bees they carry the pollen by the sustaining by sustaining the process of crop growth they bring the pollination then they also promotes tourism attraction so why would you like to go to bandipur or nagarhole wildlife because you wish to see either tigers elephants or leopards or it may be beautiful butterflies or very fascinating birds as well as chital samba nilgai black buck and so many organisms uh, 
so most people many people choose to visit a certain country over the other is basically due to the country's flora and fauna people wish to visit the amazon forest or western ghats this is because to watch and have an idea about fauna and flora of that one as well as their natural habitat like uh, forest mountains or water bodies it's also been true that the countries with the largest portion of wild animal if a country is having large number of wild animal it is also known to attract bigger number of tourists bigger number of tourists which is the case in case of amazon and countries such as tanzania costa rica kenya brazil thailand and south africa any tourist when he is choosing his or her destination uh, they have the tendency to choose the places where they will see many wildlife animal wild animal source see just you imagine what is the how much a person will be thrilled if he is able to see the wildlife like this when you go for a tour <laughs> so seeing the wildlife in the wild is a totally a different experience it's a totally different experience here i can quote uh, my own example uh, long back uh, when we had taken the students for a tour to uh, uti while coming back on the road side i was chased by an elephant somehow i could survive so this type of incidents uh, observing them in their wild uh, will not uh, we will not forget it you will that will be the moment that you cherish throughout your uh, life and like that uh, once uh, in uh, 97 or 98 i had been to uh, chatisgarh it was then the bihar uh, where there is one famous tiger reserve daltanganj um, palamu tiger reserve in the daltanganj district uh, there uh, in the morning walk i could see two three tigers they were facing face to face probably even now also i can recall this one so that's what i am telling the observing uh, the wild animals in the wild is a totally different experience you may see them when you go to zoo and other things the effect will be totally different but once you are able to face them in the natural world the impact will be much more uh, impressive then another reason why we should protect the wildlife is to protect the biodiversity and to protect the endangered species all of you know what is biodiversity biodiversity refers to variety and variability of the living organism living beings variety and variability in the living beings that you call it as biodiversity endangered species are those species which are on the verge of extinction if you do not conserve them they will perish forever because they are in a very they are a very small population so for this uh, importance of biodiversity all of you know in the bsc one first class starts with the study of biodiversity um, because in the forest lot of animal depends on each other through the food chain or food web Uh, even if you take the carnivore animal like lion cheetah and leopards depending on the herbivores like uh, antelopes for their survival suppose if the antelopes becomes extinct herbivores become extinct in the jungle that can affect the survival of these big cats also like tiger lion leopards uh it also affects the survival of other herbivores in the jungle uh, because as the cats will depend 
on the remaining animal for their survival. Suppose if the all antelopes are died, this uh, will uh, uh, again create problem to the remaining animal because these uh, uh, big cats for their survival they will jump on other organisms and catch them which uh, will gradually reduce the population of all big animals including giraffes uh, which take very long time to recreate once we lost them. Then uh, protecting ecological stability and balance. This is also equally important. Uh, ecological stability and balance is a must for the human beings. Conserving flora and fauna that encourages ecological stability and balance in the world. For example, many plants play an important role ensuring the healthy ecosystem by carbon sequestration, balancing the carbon dioxide and oxygen in the environment. This year we have felt the importance of oxygen, how much, how oxygen is crucial and what is the cost of oxygen. But now we ignore the importance of oxygen because it is available at free and every time, anywhere. So we don't thank the uh, plants for providing uh, such a useful oxygen for all of us. So if animal species become dominant, any animal species, whether it is human being or wildlife, it will cause lot of instability in the ecosystem and it affects the survival of other plants and animal species in the world. So there must be some balancing act and that uh, ecological stability and balancing uh, we should have the wildlife. So uh, to give an example, if we human beings fail to conserve the wildlife and natural habitat, it will lead to the destruction of our water resources causing droughts and desertification. You may not believe this. How these wildlife and natural habitats are? See, all our rivers originate in the forest. None of the rivers have originated in the cities. And uh, this origin of the river in the wild is the contribution from this wildlife as well as from the uh, vegetation that is found there. Uh, suppose because of our uncontrolled human activities like deforestation, logging, what will cause? It will cause negative effect on the environment. So once there is a negative impact on the environment, then what happens? It will cause imbalance in the ecosystem. So that's why managing or conserving the wildlife means protecting the ecological stability as well as the balance. So uh, this is what um, uh, I wanted to discuss with you as far as the uh, what you call the uh, yeah. Uh, why we should protect the wildlife. So, uh, have you understood what I have discussed? What we have discussed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in the uh, next class, uh, I will discuss with you the agencies uh, involved in wildlife conservation and both government as well as the non-government organization. And then... Uh, some of the acts and endangered species, Red Data Book, Ramsar Convention, and some CBD, Convention on Biological Diversity, Project Tiger, all these things we have to discuss. Actually, this is totally a four hours portion. In remaining three hours, I have to complete this and wind up uh, this uh, discussion on uh, wildlife biology. So, if you have any doubt, you are free to interact with me.
Yes, tell me. Any doubt? 